Welcome to episode 17 of the Carnism Debunk podcast. Today, I'm joined by Oliver Loss, who's been a regular activist with Anonymous for the Voiceless over the years doing street outreach in Germany, and was recently a guest on my live stream about effective vegan advocacy on YouTube. He's lately seen some notoriety on TikTok in particular for his outreach videos. His username on there is De Extrema Vegana, in English, The Extreme Vegan, uh, where he has amassed 34,000 followers and counting in a very short space of time. Uh, he also runs the Anti-Mainstream podcast on Spotify, which is mostly in German, but he has one English episode uh, so far featuring me. Uh, anyway, it's really good to have him on today because it's always interesting to discuss movement issues with him. So, Oliver, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. And uh, I have to note a nice pronunciation of De Extreme Vegana. Uh, yeah, I've been working on it after you <laughs> critiqued my last attempt. So, <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's good that I got it right today. So, um, yeah, I, I did a post recently, Oliver, didn't I, about why people are dropping out of the animal rights movement. Um so I not only wanted to discuss that with you about why people are not being so active as they used to be, because this is a problem that we are seeing. Um, but I specifically got you on today because I think you're a, a great guest to talk about this because you're someone who actually kind of got cancelled almost from the movement or for, at least from the organisation that you volunteer with. Um, but then you manage to actually come back. And so I see you as an example of why we can't actually use this as an excuse. Because one common thing that I heard recently is, you know, like, oh, you know, infighting in the movement and stuff. And I just don't want to be part of that anymore. You were a victim of all that stuff. And yet you came back strong. C can you tell us what happened to you a few years ago um, that significantly impacted your life in the animal rights movement yeah um yeah at first i want to want to say um what you said especially is important it's excuses most of the time mm -hmm. and uh, maybe we will mention later uh, the the solutions for it because um people tend to always search for excuses for not uh yeah attending work for not working on uh, stuff with uh, on the um yeah, on the uh, activism yeah. and uh, I think yeah um, now coming to me um, yeah it was actually uh, middle of 2019 okay. where things escalated um, I, would, uh, I was organizer at uh, AV in two chapters here in Germany um, yeah and then it's uh, there, there were like sometimes you have troubles with people and sometimes they are like uh, they want you out because it, what what I really can see in the movement is also like they envy people for being more active than yourself. Yes. Yeah. And um, I think it was kind of a mix of of maybe envy of my position of my work and a little bit of uh, they don't like me as my as a character i mean i'm right. very direct to the people you you can see it also in the outreach videos yeah. some people like it some people uh, don't and um in this case there were like a few people who who didn't like it and um yeah when I, when i first uh, started in the movement i i was actually i was pretty shy before yeah and um then i realized i have this specific thing i can do and i'm really good at it i i saw the videos of gary rovsky and i thought i want to do the same i want to talk to the people in this like you you know the interview with the Is israeli uh um yes he did you are with 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 lions the the argument yes. that it was like yes yeah? yes the woman on the on the news show yeah yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and he was just destroying this woman by by just <laughs> giving her simple and smart answers and i thought yeah of course uh, i can open the people's minds um regarding animal rights by just um talking to them in this way mm -hmm. and this is why i i really focused on outreach i started the first cube and i really said yeah yeah okay i can stand in the cube because i'm i'm here i'm new here but after 40 minutes i did the whole uh, uh two hours i i was just outreaching because yes. I directly recognize it, it it is my it is my passion in this uh, activism. Yeah. Um. Then it, it develops 
yeah, okay, now I'm getting much attention because people are noticing. Uh, I, I get a lot of attention, people uh, noticing I can do it pretty well, uh, the outreach. And uh, at first time in my life, I also got a lot of attention from, from women. Right. And yeah, and uh, yeah, I was 22 and I really <laughs> so it kind of went to your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 you you can you can explain it a little bit like this, but yeah, yeah, after all, it was like it, it was never, uh, yeah, um, like, like we come uh, later to the to the point. But uh, if you have like here and there two two women and they don't like each other, yeah, you know, it can escalate, but uh, in this case. Uh, I don't want to go too deep into it, but let's just say there was one person who was really focusing on this specific point and he contacted himself, several women to um, collect statements from them. Right. And then he used the statements against me uh, to, to let's just paint the picture of me being like uh, harassing women in the movement and they mm -hmm. drop out of activism because I was there. And there was even saying I used my position as organizer to get to the women, which was completely, uh, yeah. yeah, not true. And this is what I, I really appreciate you being open about this because most people who this something like this happened to wouldn't want to talk about it because mm -hmm. they would fear that it sows seeds of distrust in the people who merely hear about it. I was uh, working for AV at the time when this happened to you and I couldn't really like do much like about it. I, I had just heard about this incident possibly from you actually, but I know that it was handled at the time very poorly by AV's um, HR team so much so that um, you ended up like requesting a review of it, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we came to the point where it just escalated. They suspended me for a month. But after this month, they banned me for one year. And then I realized a little bit later, wait, why are they doing it? I, I read the text, the ban text, and it was just based on um, speculation. It was right. based on nothing uh, no, no proof, no, no evidence, nothing in this in this direction, and this was where where I got active to to uh, work against it, and this was where where it really got um, difficult because in the process of me trying to re rectify the situation, the 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 things they said about me. Um, they they got worse. Uh, it ended up in that they called me a uh, um, sex, sexual abuser that I right. molested. Oh my god! The women, which was never the case, and it really really escalated. And I was panicking more, and I was uh, writing to other organizations, for example, Safe Movement or uh, Direct Action, and uh, they even got the got the case. Yeah. But they didn't want to talk with me about me. Uh, so they just straight up banned me because yeah, AV did that, so we ban you too. Right. And yeah, and this uh, escalated to the point where I talked to the um, AV again to the uh, yeah. HR uh, department. Yeah, and um, yeah, they just uh, didn't want to really talk about about this. They didn't provide evidence why I was banned and I was requesting it because I just wanted to know where they got all yeah. the information so I can talk about this. And they were like, yeah, okay, we want to close this case. Don't get on our nerves. Um, you are banned now forever, internationally. And they didn't and, even show you, they wouldn't even show you this, these alleged statements that were made yeah. about you. Yeah. yeah. And this is what I remember. Because then once you did like appeal that, it was like a year later or whatever it was. Yes. Um, I, I I spoke to the higher up staff at AV and I was like, could you request, could you do a review of Oliver's case here? Because he's like very sure that this is completely unfair and that there was no evidence or reason to ban him. When they re-looked over the case after those HR staff had left the organization who had originally banned you, they reinvestigated that case and they were just like, what the fuck i can't even believe that this dude yeah. was banned i'm looking at this this stuff and there's just like nothing um yeah so then thankfully you were reinstated but uh, and now you're active with av again and doing very are you are you an organizer again yeah yeah um 
it, just a short note to the to the thing. It was actually you who uh, requested it. Uh, yeah. Uh, at Paul and the Sal. Uh, yeah. I think it was two two weeks before you got kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah. so it was the perfect timing that you um, talked <laughs> to them. And yeah, they they realized I I was on a phone call with them, and they realized I, I asked for the evidence, and they were just like. Um, yeah, actually, we don't have evidence, so oh <laughs> let's just God. discuss this case again. Um, and it was pretty clear, also with the German, um, the the new German um, regional organizer. Regional, yeah, we, we I talked to her. I I showed everything I had. I explained the whole story, and it was pretty clear for her that it was all like made up, all lies, right. and um, yeah, I I got like the first um, testing. Yeah. phase time where i got back which i was really disappointed because they didn't have evidence so why should i yeah. like have this this uh this period but a year later they realized i'm really really uh like i'm really pushing av and uh, the whole organization the whole idea the cubes yeah. that they realized yeah i have to be organizer i was organizing without being organizer so um so now, obviously, this was a huge thing that happened to you, and you managed to actually come back from that. So, yeah, talk to people about how you sort of managed to overcome such a horrible obstacle in your life. Like, this was obviously yeah. a very, this is a, not a nice thing to happen to you in your life. And you yeah. managed to overcome that and not only just overcome that, but actually get back into doing regular activism. You haven't said anything like, you know, oh, I'm dropping out of the mu movement now because this happened you got straight back into that how did you do that yeah yeah the actually the in the first two months it was really hard for me because mm -hmm. uh i i cre i had my whole social life like in activism yeah um, like i i decreased all the other stuff because i was at cubes every weekend i i did cubes three times a week and um i i was it was like my my whole free time and first, I just didn't know what to do now. It was really frustrating. And I thought, yeah, maybe I can do other activism. But I think this was the main thing that pushed me, that I knew why I was doing it, that I knew I, uh, it, it's, it's not about me in this, uh, in this case. I need to still put the message out. And I need to search for other, other ways to do, do it. Um, I was I was really lucky that um, there was one organization here, um, uh, Peter Two. It's like a like the street activism group of Peter in Germany. Yeah, and uh, there was one person who just uh, got me in and uh, said, "Yeah, I kn knew about I know about all the rumors about you, but I will give you a chance." Mm -hmm. And then I started to do activism there. I just made the cubes <laughs> like we know them also um, a lot of backlash there but i i knew i was doing it because i can reach people still i can be the organizer still and um this was like giving me back the confidence uh i i lost like one or two months and um yeah i i knew i was i was pushing pushing for it and then the whole covid corona uh, stuff started yeah. And it was still like everything was unclear how it will, will go on, how it will uh, continue. Um, the funny thing is now I'm uh, kicked out of the, of the Peter 2 thing. Oh, God. <laughs> because, because of my <laughs> controversial opinions about uh, uh, COVID and all this stuff. But it's pathetic. It's absolutely yeah, because, pathetic. Also I, I because I, I realized that Peter, in, at least Peter 2 in Germany, is like, really really pushing onto the political stuff onto the climate stuff and i didn't really like how they were de developing mm -hmm. so i i wasn't i wasn't yeah sad that i dropped out of it but well, it just um, you know it, it just goes to show how easy it is to get cancelled to get banned yeah. from any animal rights group you could have just an opinion about anything that doesn't you know correlate to whoever it is that runs it or whatever and boom you're out um do you know just for anyone listening who's like thinking no it must be hard to get kicked out of an animal rights organization no it's really not <laughs> it's really not hard to get kicked out you know yeah yeah I, I heard from a lot of other people but but it was mainly like 
I mean, people w weren't thinking straight in the, at the beginning of the whole co Corona thing. And um, yeah, actually, uh, I, w when I realized maybe there is a way, I was actually planning another um, organization. But mm -hmm. I also saw what I thought, which is a reason why pe a lot of people drop out. Um, there are so many split groups from, from AV. And uh, most of them aren't doing it right. And that mm -hmm. did, this was really sad because they think if they just say, I'm not uh, with this, I, I don't have the same opinion with AV, so I do my own chapter independently. Yeah. What, what they are doing first is, yeah, they have a lot of people. They think, yeah, we're doing something new. Uh, but with the time, um, they, don't, they don't get so much new people because AV has a name. They have yes. this big, yeah, they, they built up this big organization. Yeah. And uh, so they are missing new people and the old people who are there. Yeah. They are actually realizing, hmm, uh, they are pretty much, uh, uh, they are talking a lot about politics and about intersectionality most of the times in the split up groups. And, and this is the leaves. reason. Yeah. yeah, and, yeah. And then there are adult people who just say, I want to be with my group. But yeah. they realize, okay, they are kind of uh, ideolo ideologically, um, yeah, they 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 drift apart from from the from the main goal. Yes. So, uh, yeah, the the split up groups, all of them, they they cease to exist at some point, in my feeling. <sighs> there are some some split up groups which are doing it right because they know they need to have a big social media account. They um, have a lot of people there and I really appreciate it that there are different groups that people have the um, have can choose which organization can go and do their own thing yeah yeah, yeah it's, for example uh, WTF um, yeah. the, the organization but after all this is a reason why people why people leave and uh, because they they want to be in the group they want to be uh, like do the same thing they always do but they don't realize things are changing all the time yeah and so uh, yeah what, what would you say oliver are the main reasons that we have seen a dropout rate then of activists lately no i mean i don't have data on this specifically mm -hmm. but i did do you know a post recently on my social media just just asking like i think it was quite a provocative post i'm not gonna lie but that's yeah. kind of what i wanted to do i just said why have so many vegans stopped doing activism did the animal animal holocaust suddenly end or something and yeah. it maybe pissed a few people off, but that's kind of what I wanted it to do, to be honest, because, yeah. you know, I, I'm not really getting why so many people have just stopped. So what were your theories as to why that is? What are your key theories as to why there has been a dropout rate recently? And then in a second, we'll go over the reasons that people were given. Yeah, um, I think I think at first is uh, I, I saw a lot of people come and go. And I think the, the, the infighting and split ups are just, um, they are not the reason. It, it, I think the effects of it are the reason right. that they don't have the same group as they had like one year. Yes. Um, they were, were working with. And, and they really like the social part of it. And mm -hmm. if the social part isn't like 100% on point, they just think, yeah, okay, I do something, something else. Um, or worse, they're not doing of... something at all. Is is I guess the thing they're just dropping out entirely. Yeah, and know? and this is also what I what I really don't get because this was the main reason why it pushed me why it always pushed always pushed me back to the uh, to the activism. Why I always thought, yeah, I can't lay around on my uh, whatever. I need to go out. I need to yeah need need to do something. And I th I don't think everyone in the in the vegan movement has this feeling they uh for, for example um my, my ex-girlfriend also started she was also an uh, organizer for some time and i realized she she liked to do it like i, I i'm doing something good but mm -hmm. it was like at some point um yeah but i don't need to do it always and then it was like yeah i have i have my other things to do my life isn't about this yeah. And uh, then she she didn't attend at all anymore, and um, yeah, I think this is 
a, lo a lot of people come and are doing it, have a nice time. And then they are realizing I have so much other things I need to uh, try out. I need to do. And uh, they, I don't think they really get the, the, the urgency of the, of the, um, of the situations of the animals. Mm -hmm. um, another point could be that they, that it, it uh, affects them too much that they realize they, yeah. they see the videos and they are crying directly. I, I saw quite some people who, who react like this and yes. they can't just take it. If someone stands beside them and says, yeah, I don't care. I'm going to McDonald's right now. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a very, so it's their dystopia, right? It's that awful feeling that you live in a world surrounded by apathy when something very, very serious and horrific is going on. And to see people's reactions to that is just soul destroying because before you go mm -hmm. vegan, you assume everyone that you, you know, everyone in your society to just be good people and blah, blah, blah. And then when you hear how people react, certain people to the footage and stuff like that, it's, it really, you know, it's, it, it's heart wrenching to, to see that stuff. But I'll tell you what, Oliver, let's um, because I did a follow up post to this based on the reactions people were giving as to why they're no long they're no longer doing activism. So we'll go over the reasons, the common reasons that I found within those posts. And I want to get your now I responded to each of these in my post, but I want to get your personal how you would respond to each of these, Oliver. So one of them is uh, I don't have time to be active. So, Oliver, how would you respond to that? <laughs> yeah, that. There's, I, I can, um, I, I was at some point at a, at a workshop and someone talked about this and uh, I, I really realized how, yeah, th this is like the, the most stupid excuse, I would say, mm -hmm. because if you want to take time uh, for something, then you find the time and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you, you realize it if uh, like 99% of the, of the people are like one or two or three hours on uh, per day on the phone and just scrolling by Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And if you just yeah. uh, take away some of this time, you have enough time yes. to do outre outreach uh, activism every week. But here's and... one thing I just want to add to that, Oliver. Mm -hmm. Activism doesn't mean just going out on your feet and being active. Yeah, you have you you can be active on your phone. So the time they're using to scroll through tiktok through instagram whatever they're doing yeah. like goofing around it only takes one minute to like share an animal rights video or to screen record a segment of gary's speech and put it on tiktok like you can yeah. do activism now while sitting on the toilet that's how easy it is now in the yeah. digital age to do activism you can sign petitions you can write emails to people like joining in pressure campaigns you know i want to make it clear that activism doesn't mean that you have to be literally on your feet on the streets. You can be active now from your living room at home. That's how good the digital age is for this, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that's why I, what I also realized uh, with myself. I, I saw Rafaela, the militante veganerin. Yeah. And I saw how how much she's doing, and it was like, um, yeah, uh, she she's doing so much, but I can't because I don't have so much time. And now I realize when I'm new, now doing the TikTok videos, the YouTube videos and all this stuff, I, rea yeah. I realized I'm not watching so much bullshit anymore. I, uh, I don't have the time to scroll through my Instagram to watch every story of everyone yeah. because I'm posting myself. And this is what, what I think is, is also good for the people themselves. Just yeah. put more into creation instead of consuming. And, yes, uh, good point. Yeah. Um, the next one was, I can't post on social media because of my job slash I want to remain anonymous. So how would you deal with that one? Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the internet is anonymous. <laughs> you, you can be there whatever you like. It's so yeah. simple that I think that one just has the simplest answer. You can yeah. literally create, you can hide behind a you can literally just create an account now, just call it, you know, animal rights activism for for the win or something like that with just a picture of a fucking 
beaver or something as your profile picture. Yeah. <laughs> then, For like, example. Boom, there you are. Your employer doesn't know it's you. Your friends and family don't know it's you. And you can get straight on TikTok and you or Reels or whatever it is and start uploading stuff. So, yeah, I think this is probably that. That's probably just the easiest one to respond to. Now, this one you have to be, I guess we have to be a little more sensitive in responding to because this is a more understanding one. But I still th I still think this has a fairly simple response. So this one is, I have a condition or disability that prevents me from being active. How do you respond to that? Um, yeah, it, it, yeah, it depends because um, it d depends on the, on the disability that yes. the, the person has. But if he um, like says it like this, I have something that prevents me, then um yeah i i would be interested what did this person try out D does he mean yeah. yeah okay i can't i can't really walk so it's not really possible for me to drive around all the city and go to a go to your cube yeah or does he mean yeah i my my hands are not working i, I i'm not sure because yeah. there are ways but um l like you said in the beginning there are so many ways to do activism so many um alternatives what you can try out so um yeah. if he if he really has the the possibility uh he should try it out or she and uh other ways uh we know it there are a lot of uh, activists who can be supported by patreon so if you are not able to do it but you have some money left which you are uh, other way would you'd be buying some stupid unnecessary stuff yeah maybe just pay, pay the 10 uh, euros or dollars or whatever a month to uh, an activist you really like and support that's also yeah I, I consider that a form of activism as well financial activism but you know supporting activists and, and and um and groups via patreon or or however because that helps them that's another way you can do activism you know from your own living room basically you know there's um i'm currently i currently support another activist myself on patreon despite me having a patreon account of my own and it's so rewarding because um she's doing such amazing things um 269 gem it is so Gemma barnes a good very good friend of mine um and you know it's very rewarding i'm just giving her a few quid a month but i'm seeing like her posts of what she's been doing and she's directly liberating animals and stuff and it's it, it, more people should be doing this. Why aren't we donating to people who are going in and saving animals from these places? Um, yeah. You know, it, it's uh, you're paying for their petrol costs and stuff like that. So it's a fantastic, it's a fantastic way to do something for the animals. If if you you know if you're unable to, if you if you're um, and th this is for people with disabilities as well, that's a, something that you can absolutely do. Um, yeah. And then most of the time, it's it's not like you're paying. The, the activist money for that he can buy himself like another pair of shoes it's like <laughs> you're paying uh, because activism itself also costs something yeah. i have to drive to all the places i have to exactly. like load up the battery for the cubes and all this stuff and yes. i think if you see it a little bit more like this it's not um yeah that you're pay paying their next uh yeah yeah four million dollar villa for example <laughs> <laughs> yeah I would, I would love that would be good. Right? <laughs> yeah. so the next one is i get burnt out or mentally exhausted easily how do you respond to that one mm. yeah actually um for for myself i i i think um i have like i feel like i have uh, an immunity to that <laughs> i'm not sure because <laughs> yeah because when when I started to to do two cubes a week, yeah. um, people said, "Yeah, be be a little bit more patient. Don't don't go to every cube. You don't need to." And yeah. then I started to do three cubes a week. <laughs> but <laughs> but I I know people um, who yeah who are very stressed mm -hmm. at some point by by the by the action and they especially the the so, social component. Yeah. Um, some people are like really stressed out only if they are standing in the cube and see a lot of people, see a lot of faces. And um, if this is too much, yeah, I mean, the alternative is maybe do not go so often. And mm -hmm. if you need to uh, take really take your breaks, yes. um, there are there are a lot of, a lot of dedicated people 
And um, yeah, I, I think when people are get burned out in this way, they um, are not really in touch of what they are capable of. And uh, mm -hmm. they, um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't want to say, yeah, you, it's your own fault because uh, I, after all, they are doing so much work for the animals. But um, I think, li like you said, we have the alternatives. Maybe if you, if you are burned out, yeah, take your break th three months, uh, a year, whatever, but come back because you know how yes. important it is. Because the animals you know, don't get a break. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, if if your work is like that before, when you take a little, little break, yep. then yeah, go go at it again. I I, I saw actually a, a guy in in the Netherlands. He said I got burned out, um, but I'm so happy to be back because I know this is my calling. This is my uh, um, this is my task in life. Yeah, and uh, this was there. I was really happy to see that people are coming back. I'd also like to add, there's, there's ways of doing activism that don't burn you out at all. Putting a fucking sticker on a lamppost yeah. or just writing go vegan on chalk in the, on the wall. These, these don't burn you out. Like there's, there's so many, you know, it doesn't have to be the really hard hitting stuff, yeah. like watching horrific footage all the time and arguing with people on the street. I understand that that can burn people out because I feel just kind of, like, oh, sometimes, you know. Yeah. Um, but for God's sake, there's, there's just like little things that you can do to be active that don't require any mental exhaustion at all. So again, yeah, I, but it, so maybe much. maybe a thought to that, um, because um, uh, at some point, if people have burnout, they um, can't really like control this like amount of what they're doing. I mean, mm -hmm. when they start to to sticker, like you said, it's 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 not much. They they think yeah okay now I can do more now I can do more and I did I didn't check this box and I didn't check this box and it like escalates again that's yeah. why I think it's also important um, if they really if they really burnt out if they really can't have to focus anymore so every time they they wanna wanna buy a sticker they can't really focus on the task so I think it's really important even for that maybe to take a break. Um, yeah, I think this change when I when I meet when I met people who have bur burned out because of other because of their 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 work, um, and you you can really see they want to be uh, chilled, they want to calm down, but they can really can't. So I think a break is really what they need. And if others say take a break now, um, but yeah, like you said. Um, the important thing is if they take a break and are not doing any activism at all, I think um, it's important they come back. Yeah. And then the last one uh, was there's too much toxicity in the vegan movement slash I was kicked out of this group slash infighting. So I think that was actually the most common response that I got. And I guess we're going to talk a little bit again about um, yeah. what we were referring to earlier in the conversation, but just quickly, how would you respond to to that one? Yeah, uh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is, but uh, <laughs> but I think um, so. There is much toxicity. There are a lot of people, like I said in the beginning, who envy others for for their success. In this mm -hmm. case, success. Um, they are they are just like sad personalities who want to bring others down. There are people who bring politics into the whole vegan movement, and um, there there will will always be like that. People don't like other people in the movement, and they uh, like talk behind their backs uh, about them. But I think this point we have to just accept in some way. We have to do yeah. our best to be respectful to the others. And it also depends if we say like, like it's, it's um, the own respons responsibility here. Uh, yeah. If you don't want an, a movement to be toxic, then yeah, maybe don't bring this toxic mentality that everyone is toxic <laughs> into the movement. And well, um, yeah, go on, finish what you say quickly. And yeah. And uh, yeah, th that's why I really said, would say, yeah, come on, cry about it. Because yeah. uh, you have to see how how the animals are in the in the in what situations are the animals in. Then you yes. can take a hit in this case, 
and uh, yeah maybe meet a person you don't really like every week because he goes to the same cube as you so one of the funny things i wanted to bring up from this which was included in my response in the instagram post hmm? was that there seems to be this false notion in the animal rights movement that animal rights has to be about working with others and joining groups and stuff like that yeah bullshit Gary Yurovsky said years ago, like he probably said this in about 2011 or something. Gary Yurovsky, I'm not saying, by the way, to do this and to live by this word. I'm just saying what Gary Yurovsky said. Gary Yurovsky advised many years ago specifically not to work with other people in the animal rights movement. He literally said animal rights activism is something you do on your own. He said, don't do activism in groups. Don't team up with other people. He says it will just lead to the toxicity, the infighting and, and you know, too many disagreements here and there. He said, if you're an animal rights activist, you should just do it solo. That's just what Gary Yurovsky said. And I mean, it worked well for him, didn't it? He's changed yeah. more fucking people than, than the most yeah, people but, we know combined. Yeah, but but the but the the craziest thing about it, uh, he, he uh, yeah, just stopped at some point and this is what what no one really understands why this person yeah. uh, in in some way stopped to talk about this topic um i i don't know if there's a connection between what he what he's advising and this but uh, i would say yeah yeah you can do a lot of activism yourself in yeah. uh, some way and maybe groups are not your not your way um like uh, rafaela militante veganerin and she yeah. said yeah um she doesn't really like all the rules stuff because she does the activism and plans the activism with the footage in her head that she creates. Right. And this is like, um, I think, yeah, I think it works in a way that she is reaching millions of people, millions of uh, young people in TikTok. Yeah. And um, for me, I would say it's, it's important because um, there are it's it's just a it's just a thing it's not a necessity but um there are just some people and we have to accept it uh who like to go eating after the cube who like to be in a social yeah. environment i like and... doing activism with others yeah you know i'm just saying you know for those people who say oh you know i don't do it anymore because of there's there's anything yeah, yeah, i don't get on with it's like well do it by yourself then you know yeah it's it's not an excuse in this way but yeah but i understand that people want to be in a group with others and i i think yes. what i said in the beginning don't be the reason why it's toxic just give yeah. your give yourself the the best you can to yeah. be open for other people's views and Yeah, don't expect them all to be like your left-wing political ideas. <laughs> just just <laughs> accept they are different people. Some are like, yeah, you know. <laughs> accept people have different views from you, Oliver. Didn't you know that that makes you a fascist yeah. to think that? And then that, that's the funny thing. that we I, I, That's a good segue, actually, to the next thing that I wanted to talk about. This is going back to the kind of cancel culture thing, right? You got kicked out of a march a few years ago in germany didn't you or some you got some controversy for a sign or something that you took to a march yeah actually it it was a friend of mine it was in 2020 mm -hmm. and it was i i'm not sure when this uh, george floyd incident happened 2020 yeah it was also 2020 yes yeah and yeah they they were all like the the um they actually had the official animal rights march in cologne yeah But uh, they didn't really make it official. <laughs> they didn't talk to the search, uh, the search activism group. I think right. it's called yeah. from um, Ed Earthling. Oh yeah, Surge. Yeah, yeah. Is, uh, and yeah, is... they are organized, or they helped organizing the the um, the official animal rights march. But yes. they just took the sign from the la year before and said, "We are the official animal right, rights march this year." Right. And then they made up specific new rules like you can't wear an av t-shirt uh at the queue at the at the march you can't yeah they they have a safe space in the march oh where God. all the people who feel unsafe can run in the where, where i thought yeah <laughs> where i thought what do you expect <laughs> from people to come there they that we need a safe section in the in the oh march oh my God. and Yeah, we, I, I was kind of like 
triggered from it because I thought you're putting so much effort into saying we need to focus on all the people who come to the march and not to the animals. The animals. They didn't have one word about the animals in all the posts they did before. <sighs> But I was still attending because I was thinking, yeah, I want to be loud in the in the city. Yeah. And uh, I, I missed the marches the year before, which was really sad. But we have so many COVID restrictions and all this stuff. The march wasn't really good because we had to go another way and there were like no people. Yeah. But uh, a friend of mine had on this on his uh, on his chest. We were yeah. both um, like uh, we didn't have a T-shirt or something on. Um, we were just like um, topless and yeah. showing our vegan muscles. Um, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I had like built by plants or something like this or vegan body. And he yeah. had all lives matter. <laughs> <laughs> so this was it. And this was the ultimate triggering point. And uh, suddenly they, it, it wasn't uh, all cops are bastards. Suddenly yeah. it was, hey, cops, please come to us and oh, how this, convenient. this one out. How yeah. convenient. Right. Yeah. That, uh, that is And they were beautiful. really gathering, gathering around them. And the police was so confused because they didn't really get what they were talking about. And they just said, we can't kick this person out only because he has something on his chest. And they was like, yeah, but Black Lives Matter. But yeah, but uh, didn't you know that this is racist, that this is right wing and all this stuff? And, oh, my um, God. So they went. This is just beautiful. So they went running to the police. Yeah. In the name of an anti-police <laughs> mantra that they had and asked. Yeah, I, I, I saw, I saw, I saw the, the the main person who got to the police. You can see her Instagram, or at this at this time, I saw her Instagram, and it was it was like ten posts about how the cops are best at and how police is brutality is so yeah. But in this case, it was convenient for them, so they asked the police to throw him out. Oh the police actually was neutral to it, but I came yeah. to him, and uh, I think I don't know if he made it if he erased it or if he just wrote all animal lives matter on it right so no uh, yeah it's uh, after all uh, it it made even sense for mm. the police that he wrote all lives matter on his chest because they said yeah this is an animal rights march right you talk about that all lives matter <laughs> and this was i was just talking to him yeah just come just leave them like this and we just uh, attend the rest of the march And you know, actually, in the end of the march, um, there was a person coming to me, a, a, a young woman, and he, she said, uh, have you ever checked your privilege? <laughs> oh, and my God. you are going topless here and I can't. And I was, I was just confused. Like, that's your thought. fault. Like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and you... Uh, I, I mean, I, the, the, the other, my, my, my um, buddy was talking to her and she explained it to him and he was really open for her explanation and he, she, he said, yeah, I, I get your point. It's stupid that women can't go topless than men, men can and all this stuff. They talked about it. But after all, I was just thinking, yeah, okay, we have now all this stuff we can talk about this march, but what was the, 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 the point of the march? The animal yeah. rights. And uh, after this, It it was really um, yeah frustrating, yeah um, feeling that it was like I, I mean I knew if I would come it would provoke some people but I didn't knew it would go this bad so um, after this I really blocked a lot of people I really realized I don't need to be present in their section of activism I just no. ha be in my own section and. Um, this is what I really can advise to the people who, who think, who work in groups with other people mm -hmm. and you realize, yeah, you may provoke some of the people, just leave them. They, 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 will, they will infight in their yeah. own group, but if you are focused on animal rights, just go to the other groups, just go to where you can only focus and if you don't like any of the people, yeah, just don't, don't go to the eating afterwards, just don't go to yeah. the um yeah cubes or whatever so. you know the, these people who made this safe space policy at the march they need to know that this is actually detrimental to us to our mentality as activists what they're doing is they're fostering they're creating a culture where 
if something you, if you don't like something oh no i'm uh, i now have to call the police because someone said some words and it it's like we need to be tough we need to be mentally tough as activists and we yeah. need to be teaching the younger generation now coming through. They need to be taught that there's a shitty world out there and people have different views from you. And you've got to be tough. You've got to resi be resilient. You've got to push through. These people who are at the march, these total idiots, they're fostering a culture like where they're just making everyone fragile and uh, unable to deal with even the littlest thing, like a, a message on a shirt. Um, so much so that they got the police over to deal with it. It's absolutely pathetic. And they don't realize that this plays into the people, you know, this could create be creating people who get burnt out easily and stuff like that. Um, but I think, yeah, you know, I, I have a little theory, actually, Oliver, as to why kind of like the woke culture like that is so bad in countries like Germany, the UK and the USA. I think there's also a certain level of like, guilt from each of these countries because we both come from con countries who have like committed like atrocities in the past or well all countries have committed atrocities but it just seems to be that the focus is usually on like britain the usa and germany it's like there's this g guilt culture that goes on as in like oh my country did this in the past they did slavery or the holocaust or colonialism or whatever it is i now have to be like super out there to show how much that I'm a good little person and that I care. And it's like, bro, you don't need to do that. We all know that these things are bad. You don't need to proper like act out like as if like to sort of prove to everyone that you weren't responsible to these things. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. Uh, I, I think especially in Germany, the, the Holocaust topic is very s is sensitive and uh, yeah. they're always telling, yeah, the Holocaust comparison. Where, where you just say it's not a comparison at all we we don't compare the one with the other we just say that it is one it is a holocaust and, and i think and i re recently heard that you you can't even say it that the comparison because someone can um a, a friend of mine who has a who has an online shop she mm -hmm. got um um so the, someone went to the police and t told the police yeah she is using this to um yeah to uh, put down the Jews and all the other victims of the Holocaust, and yeah, it's crazy. But in Germany, it actually it is uh, in in the law that you can't do this kind of stuff. So, yeah. But but after all, yeah, I I get what you mean. Um, it it can be in uh, it can be like this, but um, I think this is like we we already talked about this the the victim mentality of the of the population right now. Yeah. Uh, they they are always the victims and they don't realize that the animals are the much much greater victims and yeah. um that we need to be strong we need to be strong as personalities and as a movement to be strong for the animals yeah and i think what i always talk about is like you you it builds your own character if you are strong for the animals it 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 actually builds your own character and you Yes. learn to be strong with your opinion and don't let others like this is whole thing that it had it had such a positive impact the whole banning thing and canceling thing for me because i don't really care about this anymore i don't really care about if some person thinks my opinions are like uh, thinks of me that i'm a nazi or whatever because i don't really care because i'm doing the right thing when i'm doing animal rights activism yeah and i think the more people should have the mentality, but actually I have a feeling in the past few months and um, actually when all this blew up with, with videos, TikTok and all this stuff, only the animals got attention. We, yeah. we, aren't, we, we have some comments who say, yeah, you're from the Green Party and you try to, <laughs> you try to um, infiltrate the youth with, with your videos. But <laughs> I, I always think, they are the exception. Oh, everybody knows it's only about the animals. We don't want to want to make a political statement with it. And yeah. I think this is a really po positive development because I don't hear much from the intersectionals anymore. Well, I was going to get your theory on that at the end of the podcast, actually. So we'll come okay. to that later. Um, now I just wanted to talk briefly about your TikTok um yeah. because you've, you know, when you first got your TikTok account, you know, it was I think it was 
kind of a slow build up. You had maybe a few hundred followers and then boom, you just exploded out of nowhere. And you've now got like 30,000 followers. And you did that in the space of probably like four months or something. I don't know. It was yeah. something like crazy. So tell us how the hell you managed to do that for anyone, because I, I think short form videos now is an extremely effective way on social media to get the message out there people tend not to watch long form videos anymore if they have the option of watching short videos so this is very important that activists do reels and tiktok and stuff like that so oliver can you just give anyone listening um some quick advice on how the hell you managed to do that yeah i I actually cheated a little bit (laughs) (laughs) that's fine i cheated this absolutely fine Um, yeah yeah it was like uh, a, a shot before one month before me um rafaela uh, i i mentioned her a lot of times the militante veganerin on yep. on tiktok and youtube um she was like getting a lot a lot of views and uh, her um videos were always on the for you page of like thousands of people um in germany and austria and that's why I, where i realized yeah we need to be german activists we 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 need this german language because we have so many um international uh where english speaking activists but we need this german section because she is yeah. getting so much attention on on the platform and she actually posted like three or four videos on my tiktok and where i i noticed where you get followers from if you get one viral video over a million views you get like people are just clicking on the on the um, on the like button and then yeah maybe they misclick or they just click every button they can if they see a video and they click on the follow button and this is where the most followers come from it's it's i don't think it's really like yeah i like this person a lot i will follow them maybe i see on his page no it's just on the for you page and they scroll and they see the video and they like and follow and done mm. but um that's even better because it means a lot of your followers are non-vegans and they're now yeah, seeing and your content. Th- that's what I wanted to mention. I mean, we have all the long videos. I think there are a lot of vegans who want to know the whole conversation and yep. they want to see, yeah, like the details, how you um, maybe do a workshop, how you explain uh, outreach to others. But the, but I realized when I was doing activism online, I only reached the people who are already vegan. And mm-hmm. maybe I gave someone some of them some advice, yeah. but I realized I need to reach the other ones, the the not vegans, the the non vegans. And this was on TikTok where I realized when Rafaela got so many messages, private messages, where people were telling, "Hey, you re- you opened my eyes. I'm vegan mm-hmm. now. You you told me the truth. I'm vegan now." And I also got this this one message at the time, and I realized. Okay, when I get this one message, it's like this ultimate um, motivation to do it, to yeah. do it more. And uh, yeah, she posted three or four videos. All of them got over a million views. So I got like, I, I would say fifteen thousand followers only for her for vid- for four videos. I got like uh, mm. six hundred thousand likes of them, and then it was my time. I also got a viral video. Um, yeah. over a million views and then it was like running from itself and people it is connected to my instagram so people are coming to my instagram to my facebook page to my youtube and, um, um, and what's her secret though oliver why is Rafaela <laughs> getting so like so it started off with Rafaela's vids on your yeah. thing right so you um, cheated the system and that's fine but how the fuck did she get all these millions of views what did she do to do that yeah, uh, she. Uh, I, I'm not sure she explained to me some some details on what I have to be aware of. And it was like, you have to catch them in the first few seconds right. in yep. the video. So, uh, for example, um, one of her viral videos was just a, a, a boy just complaining loudly about it. And right. she was like smartly answering them. Um, and uh, this is what them, what catches them. Yes. Also, what I really noticed is um, when the when the non-vegan there there were I mean the most videos are like explaining and giving good arguments, but when the non-vegan is doing something like they troll them uh, in one yes. one video, it was like, yeah, I, I I'm now going to eat a a, a big döner kebab, yes, and ha ha ha, 
But this is where the most people commented because yes. they was they were like, haha, she's so funny. Yeah, not 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 the not Rafaela, but the girl. But mm -hmm. they they don't realize that I think what, what really helped Rafaela is the controversy. She also did in the in the beginning really contro controversial videos yes. where she was like screaming and shouting at people, and they were they were really upset the people. But after all, it's only a strategy mm. from her to get a lot of attention. And now, yes. watch her watch her videos right now. She's calmly explaining explaining it on a table uh, at a table. She's uh, showing her um, her science. She's explaining it to to young little boys who are really interested in the topic. And I think it's it's really was this smart move to get a lot of controversy and attention. And now do it like like she's doing it in yeah. on the streets so be controversial and, and grab people's attention i think that's yeah. the key thing i think also there was a thing you mentioned this to me about using subtitles in the video and making sure they're mm -hmm. centered in the it right in the center of the screen yeah um and also you said to like make it so it's the full length of the the portrait uh, of like so it's on your phone that's how the short phone the um, short form video works you said people tend to stop and watch more or it, the algorithm likes it more if you actually yeah. have the video the full portrait length of the phone rather than have it like condensed in the middle of the screen so those are yeah and if you come to technical well. stuff we we have a lot of cuts in this in these uh short videos i mean yeah it's it's a lot of work to to know okay i have this big conversations like six seven minutes and then mm. i need to have one section where we just like have a have a, a conversation where she says something and i say some say something um yeah and then cut it out and really also cut out the like um and the the thinking and all this stuff because it should be like pe people's attention span are, are, are complete shit so they need to get the <laughs> yeah <laughs> they need to get the quick cuts to to know what it is about and yeah. um yeah i think this was really the the reason why it also blow up for me when i really just when she gave me advice how to do it and i just copied like her work and yeah. how she do, did it and it's yeah it's it's crazy how it blew up because i'm now going to the gym and people are watching like on her phone and watching to me and they were like what it's him, it's him. <laughs> it's <you. laughs> oh shit that's and, crazy and the and the the crazy thing is um I think it's it's really really positive thing for the cubes also because people are not standing uh, uh, so so normally they see the videos and then they are standing and are interested in the videos but sometimes now they see me or see Rafaela yes. and then they are standing and waiting until they can talk to to us but wow. we have a lot of features now but That's but this cool. is like another like mechanism to grab people uh, to get attention and think this is really important and one last thing to this i also have two videos of uh, of women crying for the mm -hmm. footage you can't really show the footage in tiktok but if you show someone who is crying people yeah. are really really interested in watching what she was watching to know yes. why she is crying and i had like thousands of comments where they the people were like yeah, I really watched the videos and I get why they are like this now. I get why are they so angry. I get the, why yeah. they are doing this kind of activism. So showing emotion seems to be the thing on TikTok as well, to grab them with yeah. the outreach videos, whether it's like anger, whether it's crying or something like that. Mm -hmm. People want to stop and see something that's a little bit, well, it's in your name, the extreme vegan, right? They want to see something <laughs> that's a bit extreme or something like that. They don't want just some kind of mundane, boring video. They want something that really grabs them. Um Changing the subject now kind of entirely, Oliver, because um, I wanted to come to sort of the stuff towards the end about the intersectionals being so quiet, get your theory on that. But I remember you said um, on your episode of the Anti-Mainstream podcast that you had me on as a guest, you mentioned that I really opened your eyes with that video I did about called Debunking My Intersectional Critics, like two or three years ago i did that vid and i did a, it was a video about how um these people want to build an inclusive movement but yet they want to kick people out who don't share their exact views on everything and i said how it's impossible to have their 
position, that consistent anti-oppression position, whatever, because literally everyone's views are considered like oppressive to someone else. There's no such thing as a person who's got perfectly consistent views to others across the board. What was it about that that opened your eyes? And what was your mentality different then before that video? Were you erring more towards the side of um were you in disagreement with me about anything before you watched that but what why did you say that that video opened your eyes um i think when, when i when i started activism i was also like very motivated with all the activism and there were a lot of like climate activism yes like it was a combined even at a v at, on the t-shirt it was saying environment and health Yes. which is now gone and i'm happy yes. that it's gone <laughs> <laughs> it's just animals uh, so yeah 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 but but it was like people weren't really making the this this they, they um the separation of the topics so i also was in the beginning like more of the left green thing and also from my family's perspective right. but um i realized from my own experience the whole um feminism topic i realized yes. how deep it can be and how simple it is made out of the views of some people. Um, like, for example, women are always right. This this yeah. one. And yeah. when I watched your videos, I, I also was like, I was never really so deep into politics, but I was always interested in, yeah, in some of the movements I was, I was uh, watching then. And I was really um, interested with the whole Black Lives Matter thing yeah and um then you made the video i think it was um you you showed the card of the um of united states and showed the red part and the blue part of yes. obviously of the of the parties yeah and i realized okay we we there are so many people the red ones the red part we need to reach them also and yes. then you explained it a little bit more and said for example the 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 best example in my head was when when you quoted uh, made a video quote of trump where he was saying we need to fight for the lgbtq people <laughs> and yeah. on the other on the other hand uh, um, obama where he was saying i'm against uh, gay marriage yes at some point. <laughs> and so i was like a, yeah. and this was really eye-opening because i thought you would never get it in our media here no. This would never happen, but no. it was like a real footage. So, so uh, it can be like just made up. And this was where I, I started to question certain things, and yes. also the the generally the the Corona pandemic, how people are just gone. Like we need to do everything the government says, and yeah. I realized, yeah, it's not everything like it like it is. It's not that left is good, right is evil. And... exactly there's so much more nuance than yeah. that and what people think about each side is largely just controlled by the media so no I'm, I'm glad that that video helped and i think it helped a lot of people actually i did see a lot of people who i wouldn't have expected to say you know they thought they said stuff like damn actually i watched the video the whole way through and i have to say the arguments were pretty watertight i might even link the video in the youtube description for this actually mm -hmm. Um, it was the reaction on the podcast from these two people and yes yeah um now we're coming to the end now oliver so i wanted to ask you because i've got a live stream coming up this saturday hopefully i'm, ho I'm hopefully uh, if all the guests can make it and everything it's gonna be a really good one you mentioned earlier in our chat today that you haven't heard much from the intersectionals lately. And I agree. And that's actually going to be the subject of a live stream that I'm doing this Saturday. So when we refer right to the intersectionals, we're talking about like the woke mob who are inside the animal rights movement, who are cancelling people over their political opinions, who are cancelling people because they're white males and saying we have a white male hero worship problem and um, just causing all these ridiculous, divisive SJW kind of issues peddled inside the animal rights movement i'm not gonna now i, I just want to ask what your theory is oliver as to why they seem to have just like disappeared and that cancel culture in the animal rights movement now seems to be at an all-time low i'm not going to push you on your answer or anything like that because i'm going to do more of that on this saturday's live yeah. stream is where we're going to be getting deep into it but 
just before we go, Oliver, what is your theory as to why cancel culture in AR from the intersectional squad, the 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 cancel mob, has just disappeared? What's happened? I think because they they are too busy fighting each other. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think this would be my uh, first guess. Um, yeah. And I also think um, now now I I see um, a, tr a trend in in the animal rights movement where people are also coming back to organizations who left four years ago when the first intersectional split up started, and uh, they realized yeah uh, maybe we can't do the perfect thing but at least we can do something for the animals. Right, and um, I also think there's a lot of a lot of those people. Um, there are so many um, things like like the Ukrainian war, um, the Russian war, and yeah, they. I, I think they are all getting. This is getting more attention for them than uh, animal rights right now, and so uh, maybe this could be also a, a reason that they have just so many other topics to cover where they can fight each other about so they don't fight each other here in the <laughs> animal rights movement but yeah like like i said before i i also have a feeling it it is getting lesser at least mm -hmm. um i mean i notice it a lot of the times that at marches or at something a person couldn't talk because he had an av t-shirt on <laughs> yeah like you're you're still talking shit because you're from av but uh it's just, it is getting way way lesser and i think because they are not really organized and and they are splitting up themselves in this right way. that's interesting yeah i i think i'll include that in this saturday's live stream i'll mention that to the guests um so yeah please everyone who's listening to this right now tune into that as well if you can hopefully that will be this saturday but yeah, Oliver, thank you so much for, for joining me today. It's always good to talk to you. You always uh, bring up interesting insights um, about stuff going on in the animal rights movement. Um, remember, guys, you can catch uh, Oliver's podcast as well, the Anti-Mainstream podcast on Spotify. I will link that below and I also link to his amazing uh, TikTok uh, channel. So, Oliver, thanks so much, man. And we'll see you again soon, everyone. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was a nice talk and yeah.